So, this video is a little weird. The prop I'm going to make is not from a movie or from a video game, it's about COVID-19. For those of you who don't know or have never heard about him, there's a YouTuber, Jazza. And he's a very diverse artist. He's actually like really amazing. Last week, well, when this video comes out, it will be like about two weeks ago, he drew custom face masks with different designs on them. And then at the end of the video, he told his subscribers, me being one of them, to create something with creative spin around this whole thing. I know it's a bit weird, but he told his community to use the hashtag Corona Creatives, which is why I have that hashtag in the title. Now I've already started with some designs and some concept art for this project. It's difficult to find something creative about this whole thing, but I think I've managed to design something in my line of work. And in fact, my Instagram followers gave their input through a poll I made, and we finally landed on a final design. So, welcome back to the craft mansion. I'm David, and in today's video, I will show you how I made this COVID shield. Let's call it that. It's a shield made to look like a huge face mask. It has a 3D emblem on the front showing how, through distance, we are still united. Yes, we keep our social distance, but we're still fighting this together. Two more important things I wanted to say before I started this video. First of all, I've changed the channel name. It is now officially The Craft Mansion. I created the name The Real Stark when I had no direction for this channel, and I gave it a Marvel Game of Thrones related name. But I'm trying to take this channel in a straighter direction and focus more on craft tutorials, which is why now the craft mansion is officially the name of the channel and it is no longer a segment of the real Stark. The second thing I wanted to point out is that I made a Twitter account. It can be found under at the craft mansion. So yeah, go follow me there. Finally, I finished the intro. That's a lot. In true Jezza fashion, I started with some sketches, and from those four, my Instagram followers voted for their favorite one. Then I drew the final design onto the face mask shield to complete the concept art. So now the concept art is finished. I have the rough idea of the shape of the shield, the face mask, and then I have the emblem that goes on top. As usual, I'm starting off with a template and I will be making the basis of this shield from floor mat foam. I traced the template twice onto the foam, once from each side. I cut all the edges at a 90 degree angle, but for the large curve, I cut at a lower angle, as this is the edge where both pieces of foam meet. I taped both pieces together and made marker lines to make sure I properly aligned them later on. To attach the foam, I used contact glue, so I applied it to both edges, let it dry for a bit, and then I pressed both sides together. The marker lines are very important here, because if I had stretched one side more than the other, the whole thing would have ended up being warped. Then I drew a design to go on the outer edge of the shield and cut the pieces from 2mm EVA craft foam. I used contact glue to attach all the pieces. Since each rectangle will end up being a separate piece, I didn't bother to cut every part from one whole sheet of EVA foam. This took me about 4 hours, lots of pieces. Come to think of it, the glue fumes aren't that good for me. I should have used a mask. I should have used a mask. You know, this instead of a mask could be one of those plates that they twirl on a stick, like... Whoop! Oh, Whoop. To make the back stronger, I cut a strip of floor mat foam and fit it to the shape of the shield. To keep this strap flat to the back, I beveled the edges quite heavily. I applied contact glue, and while that dried, I poured hot glue to make the seam stronger. And then I attached the strip to the back of the shield. So I've been thinking about these panels. What are they? Well, I landed on wood. Like pieces of wood, these would be longitudinal and these would be horizontal. I think that's the right terms, and I was looking up pictures of wood grain, until I realized that my bench is made of wood. I can just copy the patterns on my bench. So I started by cutting all separate panels, then I started with the wood grain design. This is quite random, but I started the pattern of working the lines to match the orientation of the particular panel. The lines I made to create the wood grain weren't as deep as the ones I made between each block, this is just to create that effect, like they're all separate pieces. The design is going on top, so the emblem 
will be through distance reunite and we'll have different people around the earth and they're like distanced from each other you know social distancing but this of course is not a flat surface so this is the first step in creating like a copy of this shape I taped the foil so as to keep the rounded shape of the shield and then I also added another piece to have a larger area on which I could work. By the way, this space is where the motto will go, so we'll have uh, like true distance, maybe laps over on this side, we unite. So this is the earth and my marker stopped working. Okay, now as you can see the earth will end up being rounded, creating a small problem since the earth is flat in real life. Wait, is it? I'm just gonna... Google it. Uh, okay, is the earth flat? Well, would you look at that? A simple Google search cleared up the confusion. I have a bunch of useless paper. I'm gonna start making this thicker. When I had a basic shape, I covered the toilet with a layer of foil. And now I have a secret ingredient. <coughs> it's just plaster. <coughs> I added the water bit by bit, so as to not overwater the plaster. Then I also added some wood glue, so as to prevent the dried plaster from easily cracking. Now during this toilet paper shortage crisis, I managed to spare some for myself. Unused of course and tore it into smaller pieces. Then I put on my big boy gloves and tried to put on the first layer of paper mache. I used a teaspoon, which I realized wasn't working that much, but I forgot paintbrushes exist, so I continued mushing with my teaspoon. Is mushing a word? Mush? Anyways, I mushed on some toilet paper bits and covered them with some more plaster. You can tell I gave up with this method at a certain point when I just poured the whole mixture onto the sphere like an idiot. Ah oh, yes, rub it in. Rub it with that spoon. Once it was dry, I drew a rough idea of the continents. I tried to make a dot for Malta, but it was quite unsuccessful. Then, with bits of foil, I planned out the map, trying to keep as close to the original design as I could. But of course, some details were lost, and I landed on a more rounded aesthetic. As I progressed, I hot glued different pieces of the same continents together, and then finally, I hot glued everything in place. The second time round, I took a different approach, and I only mixed plaster with water, made it very thin and applied it with a paintbrush. Now I want to take this time and talk a bit about what's going on around the world. In whatever country you're in, or at whatever stage of virus spread your country is, we're all experiencing the same fears, anxiety and horror. Yes, it's truly horrible to see what's happening right now, but we should always have hoped that this will end, and when it does, we will see our friends again, hug our grandparents, we would be able to celebrate the whole planet's victory. I know it seems difficult, but I like to look on the bright side of things, we're seeing so much cooperation between workers and citizens, and I don't just mean workers in the medical industry, but all those who are still doing their job to supply others with their needs. We're seeing how the planet is breathing a little better from the pollution decrease, and maybe that's a lesson we should all take, of how resilient nature is, even in these dark times. As of recording this video, in Malta there are 139 cases, two of which have recovered. This will increase, of course, again in the coming days, even though we are in partial lockdown, so please, Anyone who can stay at home, please do so. Be compassionate and remember, we are not doing this for ourselves, but for those who are vulnerable. Elderly people, pregnant women, people who suffer from severe conditions. There is a really good quote from The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, which can be applied to this crisis, and that is, it's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end, because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. And please don't hoard food supplies. Supermarkets will still be open, but if people hoard a lot of stuff, there won't be enough for everyone until restocking is done. If you're bored, please don't just go shopping. I made the motto from 2mm EVA foam, and it reads, through these things we unite. I chose this particular phrase because I think it brings out the main theme behind this whole pandemic. 
should all keep our social distance, and yes, we may not see those whom we love for months, but it is what needs to be done, and this battle can only be won if we unite and do this together. We need everyone's cooperation, so if your part is to stay at home, stay at home, because there are people who wish to be at home but are risking their lives, just so that essential everyday needs are reached. Wash your hands regularly, avoid touching your face, particularly your eyes, nose and mouth, and follow all the other official regulations, I'm, I'm no expert myself. I'd like to end with another quote, this one from The Fellowship of the Ring, in which Frodo says, I wish none of this had happened. To which Gandalf replies, So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. To make those people around the earth, I made six male and six female out of floor mat foam. Once I had drawn all of them, I realized they were too thick to work with and I had to start from scratch. So I used EVA foam for these figures as well. I measured where my hand needed to go and I also marked how large my holders needed to be. Before starting the holders for my arm, I bent the shield in shape using my heat gun. For this shield, I'm not using belt straps, but I opted to use foam board for a more metallic look. So I started with a strip of foam board. I measured how high and wide the small holder needed to be and then made two opposing 45 degree cuts so I could bend the foam board. I marked where I needed to glue the foam board and hollowed out the rectangular section. I applied some super glue and then covered the foam board with the VA foam. I also created the large handle for my forearm and then I used hot glue to stick them both in place. Coincidentally, I'm watching one of Jess's older videos on my phone. Usually, I keep my phone out of shots. Here, I guess I just forgot. I also left a flap of foam on the sides to look like the panel with which the handles were hammered into the wood. To seal the foam, I used a heat gun, and I paid extra care to heat the VA foam at the edges enough to open the cuts that look like wood grain. So now all the details are done, and I gave the whole thing a layer of white plaster. Now I'm going to give it a whole spray paint layer of brown, and I'll continue with the fine details. I mixed some silver, black and white paints and painted the handles. Then, for the wood panels on the edge, I painted the horizontal ones with light brown and used that same shade to paint the people around the earth. I'm just realizing I didn't film the process of gluing them, which was basically just using super glue and alternating between male and female. Now for the vertical panels, I used a lighter shade of brown and I also painted the motto with the same shade. I applied hot glue, a lot of hot glue, and stuck the earth in the middle of the shield. For some final weathering touches, I used black shoe polish roughly around the plain brown areas, and then more aggressively where I needed to define certain areas, like the people around the earth. Then I wiped off the excess to leave a residue of black in the small corners. As you can see, the wood grain is expressed more when I add and wipe the shoe polish. Sometimes I also use a small paintbrush to really get the shoe polish into difficult areas. With some final dry brushing using a very light brown, the COVID shield was finished. And that is how I made a COVID shield. I don't want to take away from the graffiti of this situation by posting this video. I just wanted to give it a creative spin while still giving you my thoughts. This is a huge thing. And yes, we joke about it sometimes and whatnot, but we still have to remember that if we take it seriously, we can make a huge difference on the impact this pandemic has if we just stay home. Anyways, I already talked about this, so I just want to thank Jezza for the idea. And if you have an idea of a drawing or a craft in this line of... Uh, Corona Creatives, post on Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag Corona Creatives and join his community. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment with a suggestion for future projects. Sometimes I get a little stuck with new projects, even though I have like 25 tutorials over here on this channel, but sometimes it's hard to come up with an idea. Don't forget to go follow me on Twitter at The Craft Mansion, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel by going with your mouse over here, then a bar shows up. And click subscribe. You can also watch two more of my videos which are over here and until then this is the COVID shield. I'm David and this is now officially the Craft Mansion. <laughs>